Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren, and when I said I want to make a list of add-ons to put together to make the game more immersive, I really did mean it. I put together a list of add-ons, and I'm still working on it, to make World of Warcraft a whole brand new experience, or almost a brand new experience for a lot of players, to immerse you into the game, but also have a little bit of practicality to it. So I want to showcase you guys the very first footages of what I have put together in terms of a couple add-ons that I just basically spent a day working with and this is something I actually really want to compete. I want to complete this whole project of the add-on set list for the most immersive World of Warcraft experience that I can possibly create and I just kind of want to showcase for you guys today. So we have right now a troll in Durotar, but in a whole new setting for World of Warcraft, the sands looks even better, the game looks more cinematic, it looks like you're straight out of a movie, right? Of course there's all the effects that you can apply in terms of Sony Vegas and to make the game look even better, but let's be honest, let's take a look at what the game is really gonna look like. And what we're going to do is take a look at what the game will actually look like. I could originally start the video with, you know, color correction on the screen and everything, give it the cinematic lines, do the different zoom-ins and everything, but I felt that it won't be a fair experience, so I'm going to have this video unedited as possible in terms of the actual footage. I will cut some of the footage just to show you the main parts of it because it's like about two hours worth of footage and I want to make you give you guys the only the important things to showcase you and everything uh, and all the footage is going to be unedited. I feel like the best way to enjoy this video and to really see for what the, uh, I guess, the camera angles, the add-ons and the combination of this immersive experience, I feel like the best way to experience it is to put it on your main monitor where you would have the game playing from, full screen it on YouTube and turn it up to the maximum resolution, hopefully in 60 FPS so then you might be able to get the most out of the experience and of course it's going to vary for everybody's PCs and internet connection but the best way to watch this video is in a full screen 1080p unless you have higher than 1080p and then I I just don't even, I can't even render a video that high to be honest. But this is what I want to show you guys and this is the list of add-ons that I put together. First of all, what I want to do with these add-ons is make an immersive experience. The first thing I want to do is make it a experience with a different camera angle, give the game a little bit more depth, make everything else around you look bigger, and kind of move away from the traditional World of Warcraft cam setting and change the camera position for just about every single event that you can find. So I'm going to be doing this with Dynamic Cam. Dynamic Cam allows you to utilize the Action Cam, which gives you capabilities to change your camera, to follow targets, and to be behind your character, and almost give you like this Elder Scrolls Online feel where the camera isn't really right behind your character. The camera is actually to the side, and you can almost use like this aimer if you put a crosshair in the middle, and maybe give some World of Warcraft aiming capabilities in the future. But it also gives you a lot more options. It gives you the camera that you can have outside, outside combat, inside a city, inside city, combat inside city inside building so the customizations are fairly major and it's really seamless it kind of just for you so when you get outside of Orgrimmar it gives you to one setting when you get inside of Orgrimmar it gives you another so what I was able to do is outside of Orgrimmar I was able to make my character have a little bit more of an exploration type of outlook so the camera is a little bit zoomed out it's still over the shoulder so it gives you the whole new experience but Inside of Augurmar, I wanted to zoom in a little bit more so you can see the detail and the depth and the size of everything. Like the Augurmar gate compared to my character. It is massive. And the torrents on the side, which are on PTR, you usually never really question just how massive they are. Because you're mostly on a mount and you're kind of just going up to get your crap and get out in terms of like PTR, DPS testing and whatnot. So I decided to give a little bit of depth to everything, and these torrents look massive. Uh, buildings look massive, the center buildings look massive, even the little hut looks absolutely enormous. And the size of everything in comparison to your character really does make a difference. And I did a lot more changes with this. One of the things I want to do is go into the hut, for example, and you'll see the transition going into the main hut where Vol'jin normally would be, rest in peace of Vol'jin. And you can just see the depth and detail that it gives you. So right now I'm inside city, inside building, and the amount of zoom that I have is actually that much greater. So you can see a lot more detail in everything. Not only can you see the detail of other characters, you can also see small details you would know or notice, like the maps on a table, and candle on a plate. 
Normally, people would just never see this, so it gives you the same game you see, but just from a different perspective altogether. I mean, how many of you knew that there were a bunch of bottles at the back of the wall? Give it a second in the footage and you'll see, Just I'm discovering those bottles back here had no clue. So this perspective gives you a lot more that you can see in the game that you've never seen. It is the same game, it's just a different experience from a different angle of the same game. And it really just shows you just how small and little our characters are in comparison to this massive world that Blizzard themselves created and modified as expansions went on. And you can see a little bit more of this, like with the inn, you can see a lot more details of the same places you've been to. And this is the kind of thing that you would never really go to zoom in on. But let's say you love the character all the way from the beginning, you would have no idea there was a knife on the table, you would never really notice the aesthetic behind it, unless you've actually looked at the game in every detail. So this kind of UI add-on will allow you to, let's say, re-level the character completely and give you a whole new setup for everything you normally would, to give you a whole brand new experience, but technically you're doing the same old thing. You're doing the same quest, you're turning in the same loot, you're killing the same mobs, and what is cool about dynamic cam, you can actually make it even more of a dynamic experience. Like for example, there's an option where you talk to NPCs and then the camera functions in a different way. So this is the same me talking to an NPC and normally the camera would be behind me and it would be very static. But dynamic cam gives you this dynamic feel that you're talking to this Orgrimmar grunt. The camera slightly rotates to the right and when you exit it will rotate back. It'll still a little bit buggy so sometimes it does over rotate or under rotate but that's usually not an issue when you're just standing still. And the best way to do it is to just let the camera do its own thing because after it adjusted itself rotating it kind of looks wonky when you're trying to do it yourself as you can see me messing around with it. So, I just want to showcase you guys what you can and can't do with these kind of add-ons put together and basically how it all looks. So, I am going to show you some of the buggy things that are happening and all, is, uh, all of that is going to be raw. For example, let's say I want to go to the bank and I decide, hey, uh, thank you, Ogmar Grunt, I'm going to go to the bank. I'm going to go talk to the bank teller over on the other side across the bridge and I'm going to have the same exact cinematic happening. But before that, I need to go write a letter to my guild leader telling them that I'll be AFK for the raid tonight. And look at the zoom and the cinematicness of this mailbox read. I mean, it's just a slight rotation, but you can see my character holding a parchment, which all the characters do, whether you're reading a map or reading anything. There's a mailbox, there's a mail on the left, and my bag's on the right. And the camera just does it on its own. So this is the kind of things that Blizzard have allowed players to do with the action cam setting. And these are a lot of just hidden settings that you would have to manually type in through the console, and the add-on basically takes advantage of all these hidden settings and allows you to manipulate them in any situation, although the add-on is a little bit finicky, when I when you are going to instances, raids or dungeons, you do have to reset the same settings, and there's no easy way of going about it right now. But still, it just gives you a little bit more of an oomph to the same game you've been playing for a while. And this is just the exploration aspects of it. What I also did with the dynamic cam and the add-ons of choice, and I'll talk about all these in a second and kind of where I got the ideas from and what I was trying to accomplish. Again, not a full perfect build, not finalized, so this is just some of the early, early game footages, the better footages of all the add-ons and the settings that I have. But I kind of first want to clean up the screen, want to immerse players in the game, but also want to make it practical. And this is just the exploration aspect of a DPS melee. Now let's take a look at some of the more, uh, I guess, functional aspects of this in terms of how does action can perform in terms of, let's say, dungeons or normal leveling. How does it perform for a caster? How does it work for melee? Is it looking any good? Does it create any more of an oomph to the game? And I got some footages, nothing competitive, but I have footage from a version of a caster, version of a melee, and I do have a more settings for these from a tank and a healer perspective uh, because I did want to customize experience for all types, but also give practicality slash immersiveness to no matter what role you're playing but not all of them are truly I guess functional because I kind of just gotta wait and wait for dungeons and uh, I would want to use it in more end game level but for me to do all the settings changes for one single character and then change him back there's just incompatibility issues with my current add-ons and this new add-ons that I'm using so it's kind of a drag so honestly I'm kind of just procrastinating because I really don't want to mess with the settings and change him back just to have my regular old add-ons again but here's some footage of a Shadow Priest running around and 
I know one of the things that Action Cam does is it does target tracking. So as you can see for the Shadow Priest, it actually tries to keep tracking the boss just to showcase you just how big the boss and every single mobility and movement it makes, it does move with your camera. It also does so with smaller mobs as they move to the left, to the right, further away, closer up. The camera does track them a little bit. I felt that for casters, especially DPS casters that are at a distance and for the most part their rotation is very much all about being stationary, then I felt like there would be no issue in terms of target tracking. I actually felt that the target tracking for casters was a little bit more involving. So when you have the target tracking happening on your character and then you have the, uh, I guess, the dynamic cam working at the same time, then as the boss swings from left to right, as the boss performs different attacks, as the boss moves from room to room, you really do get to feel the weight of the boss because you're not really up close to really see your size compared to the boss, but the target tracking does allow you kind of to create a little bit more of an immersive effect when you are at a distance but still firing at this colossal creature. So as a caster, for the most part, mobility-wise, it wasn't really an issue. If you, let's say, you do need to move to the side or look away, the uh, target tracking does break off fairly easily. Uh, so if you, let's say, want to look to the right and move away, you look to the right and move away, it won't really just like, keep pulling you to the boss and make you pull, run in a weird direction. Uh, it will break off properly and uh, it will allow you to be able to have all the mobility and have all the control of your camera. So that's one of the things I wanted to make sure to establish is it has player control and it's not an annoying experience. It's an immersive experience and it's supposed to generate you this effect of like, whoa, this massive beast is swaying left and right and the camera is moving and it really makes you focus on the boss. But let's say a mechanic where you need to just move around, you can easily just uh, untarget from the boss. It'll just uncouple as you look to the left, look away from the boss completely, and it will allow you full control of the camera. As soon as you do look back at the boss, it will try to angle you towards the boss, which I felt like still gives you a little bit more of this immersive feel. Let's say like, uh, let's say you're running from something colossal, right? You look away, your camera is normal. You look back, and then the uh, the camera kind of tr uh, tracks towards the boss, and the boss is running at you, and you're like, this just gives you a little bit more of this cool cinematic experience that you would see kind of like in Hollywood, and uh, I very much appreciated that experience. I thought it was uh, really unique, and I felt like for range casters especially, it wasn't all that intruding. As a melee though, this it would be the worst setting to put on, because then your camera is swaying left and right, as all the ads in front of you are performing different attacks, some were moving through, and you don't really want that, so I kept that out completely out of the melee experience altogether. But for the caster experience, I felt that the uh, target tracking was kind of worth the effort, and worth the time and uh, I felt like it was a, for the most part a, a enjoyable experience more or less. Now for the melee experience, as I said, no uh, target tracking, so the camera is a little bit more stable. It does give you ability to see all the mobs in front of you, and as a World of Warcraft type targeting game, there's no really big issue of moving out of things. It does give you a little bit more detail in terms of your fights. One of the coolest things I added for the melee is to make sure there was a bit more tracking towards the head bobbing. So let's say as your melee character is swinging all of your abilities, like for example, a very cool animation of Larcerate for survival hunters is where the hunter jumps up in the air, swings his weapon, binding an axe, and then swings it down from upright to the bottom left side of uh, himself, and the camera just follows that quick leap with you, and it just looks really, really cool and unique and gives weight to the hits. So one of the things that World of Warcraft Blizzard himself has done uh, very well is the animations for the melee gave a little bit more weight to your abilities. Your abilities are just, they look cool and they're impressive and uh, as you are using all your abilities just slashing and dashing and stabbing your foe, uh, bashing them over the hammer, whatever the weapon of choice you have, it actually looks really unique. The animations are great. But one of the coolest things about these animations is how much weight the dynamic cam can offer towards all the animations. If you swing it from side to side, you really do feel a little bit of that. I did have to tone down the uh, tracking, the head tracking for this one because if you have it too far, then let's say a swing from left to right would just feel like you're on a roller coaster and about to vomit. So I did tone it down to the uh, state where 
I thought it was tame for me, but then I turned down even more because I know a lot of people are a bit more queasy when it comes to, let's say, weird camera movement. And some people do find the action cam, especially the full aspect of it, very nauseous. So I did want to uh, tone it down for most of you guys for the video purposes. You can, of course, uh, if you do decide to use these kind of add-ons in this combination and my kind of settings uh, for this, uh, if you want to tone them up so you get more of the swing, more of the heavier feel to all your abilities, you're more than welcome to. And I felt that from a melee perspective, it actually worked fairly well. And I can only imagine this looking even better from different melee perspectives, except maybe subtlety where you are teleporting all over the place, so I would feel very much disoriented. But from a survival hunter, I think it would look great. From an out in the road, it would look awesome. Demon hunter might be a little bit dodgy because you do have mo uh, maneuverability as your talent, but maybe in the next patch you'll be able to go nemesis, so then you don't have to really use mobility unless just to move away. And here's a sneak peek really quick of all the add-ons that I'm using, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. I just want to showcase you guys exactly what this looks like from the action cam perspective. One of the coolest things that I wanted to capture as a melee is to make sure bosses look monstrosity, larger than life. I want to capture all the massive creatures and bosses as a melee so you can actually see the full boss. And the first boss of the uh, Hellfire Citadel isn't all that massive, but the other two, the demon and the dragon. Oh, the dragon, just the bosses themselves. Of course, they are kind of low rendered, uh, not as well uh, polished, especially in the BC area, and of course in Wrath, in Kata, they're a bit more polished, and Pandaria, but like, all, especially the old school dungeons, they're just not going to look as high in terms of polygon and in terms of textures. So those guys aren't all as impressive as they can get. But man, do they still look cool. Even if BC bosses that don't have too many polygons or the best textures can look this freaking good in an action cam setting where they look monstrous and it's just, it's a fun fight. It just feels like a really cool new experience of, I am fighting a goddamn dragon. This thing is like 10 times my size. This is awesome. Basically, to recapture the same feeling I've never had in terms of vanilla and fighting, uh, let's say, any of the any of the dragons that they had uh, during any of the raids. Onyxia? Onyxia, I'm pretty sure that was a vanilla thing. Uh, Neltharion, there we go, there's another one. So, I don't know, I, I, I basically want to recapture an experience I've truly, I've had in the past, but not the same kind of experience that vanilla players have, but I want to recapture the idea that it's a massive dragon. You are tiny compared to that dragon. I want you to feel like that dragon is actually big. And it is. It's just most people are, uh, they can easily look at a massive boss and just think, okay, so he's a massive boss, I'll stack by his foot, everybody will stack right on top of me, you can't really see the models, okay, cool. But here we really get to see every nitty gritty detail of everything. And especially the fights, the combat. And all these animations and then the, uh, I guess the NPC death animations on top of that and the boss size all put together from a melee perspective I felt like gave an awesome melee experience I'm honestly just watching all this footage again I'm just getting hyped all over again and I'm trying to hold my enthusiasm so I can be a bit more professional for the video purposes but man do I just want to kind of sit here and talk about oh this is so cool oh look how he look how the tank death knight used death strike and the orc looks like he's actually killed by it it's just like these just pieces are put together and it's like, unless you zoom into these things so close, you will never see this kind of, uh, I guess, quality of work that is put in and this kind of immersion that you can do with World of Warcraft. And honestly, I'm, I'm just literally, I just had a lot of fun just spending our time uh, making all the add-ons happen together. Let's talk real quick about the add-on list, and I'm pretty sure if any of you know exactly how to use this add-on, so you can recreate what I have. We have dynamic cam for all the camera changes in terms of making the game more immersive. We have domino for my action bars, and because I like the effect of domino where you can give opacity to all your abilities, plus it was really easy to customize, so it wasn't difficult to just like set up all your bars, and uh, I kind of... I kind of like how it all uh, planned out because you still have your bars and you still have your abilities and timers for practical uses in like a dungeon or a raid but you still have them dimmed so they're not in your screen so you can still see more of the game on your screen and they kind of dimmed away and of course you can change that as you need to but I want to dim them down and kind of have some add-on instead of bartender as like really easy to use really easy to put together because it has snap feature and I kind of did like it I don't know if I'll be replacing Bartender in Tempson for my personal purposes, but I did like Domino. For my health bars that are basically just straight up health lines, uh, actually just health bars, just literally a fat bar at the top, I decided to go Pitbull. I want to recreate it similar to the bars that I saw on Guild Wars, where they have a health bar of an enemy at the top. And I just want to make it a straight bar with resources. I want to take away a lot of the uh, UI elements of like numbers and percentages as I could. 
but keep only the very basics on the screen. I decided to go with a health bar on the bottom uh, and make it somewhat look like a Final Fantasy XIV health bars on the bottom. Kind of put it away from the game where you as a player can see it if you need to monitor it, but also free up as much of the screen so you can see more of the game. So you can see the health bars of your enemy and friendly and uh, your, your own health bar and target of target. I'm also utilizing Voodoo for party bars because once you uh, add a uh, Pitbull uh, for your own bars. Your party bars get completely messed up because they're giving you all Pitbull party bars. So I decided to do Voodoo and disable all party bars from the um, Pitbull. So Voodoo basically will give you similar party bars and raid bars that uh, you would see in my normal videos, like when I'm doing BGs, just the normal squares, you know, and you can make them call it coordinated, and you can change percentages because it's a really healing based bars. But for the most part, you don't need to worry about them as a DPS. So. Yes, if you are going to be doing dungeons and raids, so you can see those bars a little bit better in terms of having the OG bars that Blizzard used to have. They look very, very similar, so similar enough for you to just like put it as an add-on instead of having to, let's say you are a healer or like a shadow priest and you do want to heal a friendly, so you can have Wudu so you can just click on a friendly and find them instead of just like having to click on party members, see who has lower health and just, you know, none of that nonsense. So I did want to make it as uh, immersive as possible, but uh, practical. I'm still working on it, but if you guys want to see the final product whenever I do develop it and the add-ons list and how to get it and how to set it up, please let me know in the comments below if you want to see more of the uh, immersive experience. And I might be using this immersive add-ons together for a very specific project that I want to start in the channel in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about everything in the comments below. And of course, if you guys want to see more of this, please make sure to give this video a like and let me know what you want to see, how much you want to see, and if I should add anything into this uh, set of uh, add-ons to make it more immersive. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Dal, and I'll see all of you guys in the next video.